Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is the last lecture of this module where we're going to finish our discussion of innate immunity. Um, so uh, obviously there's lots we haven't talked about yet, but uh, um, we're going to finish with, with one more major piece of innate immunity that I think is important to cover in, in kind of an introductory level course to the topic of immunology, and that is pattern recognition receptors. So uh, we'll close out our discussion of innate immunity with this lecture, and then uh, obviously we'll have the exam, and then in the next module we'll start uh, getting into uh, the much more complicated processes of adaptive immunity. Uh, but we're not there yet, so let's talk about pattern recognition receptors. So recall that uh, pattern recognition receptors are those receptors that allow our cells to detect non-self entities, so those pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs, um, that through evolution we've come to associate with uh, you know, uh, molecular uh, motifs that we know belong to pathogens and not to our own cells. So these are the receptors that actually sense pathogens that actually can you know alert our cells that they are in our you know in our tissues basically so there are four major categories of pattern recognition receptors and um, they all kind of have a similar name there are the toll-like receptors or tlrs the c-type leptin receptors or clrs rig i like receptors rlrs or the nod like receptors or nlrs so we're going to sort of hit the highlights of each of these sort of major features of their signaling that make them distinct um, you know uh, I think there's kind of like a unique, you know, feature of each that I think is important to know. Uh, we won't get too deep into the, the nitty gritty of the of the molecular mechanisms, um, but hopefully the big picture will kind of illustrate how each how each works and what the unique importance of each is. So we'll start with toll-like receptors, TLRs. So TLRs are membrane-bound pattern recognition receptors. So they're transmembrane receptors found either in the plasma membrane uh, or within the membrane that make up endosomal compartments. So um, where they are in the cell is going to determine which types of pathogens they're likely to see. And for that reason, uh, some, some of these uh, toll-like receptors are specialized such that it, it kind of makes sense for them to either be on the outside or in the endosome. So you can see here that toll-like receptors, like cytokine receptors, are signaling through a dimeric complex. Uh, most of them are homodimers, although there are some heterodimers, but you can see here TLR4, 511, for example, are homodimers. And uh, their binding pockets are specialized to recognize particular molecular patterns associated with different types of pathogens. So you can see here that uh, bacteria, funguses, uh, parasites, they're all represented here. And in general, a, a sort of pattern, if you will, that you can see here is that large pathogens like extracellular parasites, funguses, and, and uh, bacteria um, are, tend to be sensed by pattern recognition receptors, or toll-like receptors in this case, that are on the plasma membrane, that are pointed outside the cell, because that's where those pathogens are. In contrast, the toll-like receptors that sense viruses are primarily located within the endosome. Uh, the reason for this is that most viruses enter the cell through an endosomal compartment, through endocytosis. Um, so uh, we need uh, pattern recognition receptors within the endosome that are kind of poised to be in the right place to see those viruses. So that's a major difference. Um, the plasma membrane toll-like receptors and the endosomal toll-like receptors kind of sense pathogens based on what makes sense, based on that physical location. Um, so um, I mentioned that they are dimeric receptors like cytokine receptors. Another important thing that they have in common with cytokine receptors is that they don't really have any intrinsic signaling capacity. They have to recruit other molecules to transduce a signal. Um, and the two that are important for our purposes are uh, the adapter proteins that we'll cover in this slide. The first is MyD88, MYD88. And so for the most part, all of the plasma membrane toll-like receptors recruit MyD88 after they become activated. And MyD88 is what then connects them to all of the signaling apparatus downstream, the receptor-associated kinases, the transcription factors, and so on, uh, that allow them to turn on immunological gene expression. So the, the plasma membrane TLRs use MyD88 to signal. Um, in contrast, the endosomal TRRs either use MyD88 in the cases of TLR7 and TLR9, uh, however, um, TLR4 and TLR3 use a different adapter called TRIF, T-R-I-F. 
Um, TRIF and MITE88 are going to recruit different kinases and induce different types of transcription factors, but as we'll see in the next slide, uh, all of this signaling overlaps and there's a lot of crosstalk. So, you know, the, the small details of the signaling is not what I am trying to stress here. Um, I think what the big picture here is that toll-like receptors uh, can only transduce signals if they have the help of an adapter protein. And the two adapter proteins that are most important for toll-like receptors are either MITE88 or TRIF, which you can see here. Um, and um, as we as we saw in the last slide, and as we can see here, TLR4 is kind of the um, uh, uh, exception to these general rules. So you can see here that TLR4 uh, can either be in the plasma membrane or in the endosome, so it's unique that way. And it's also the only toll-like receptor that signals both through MIT88 and TRIF. Uh, so toll-like receptor 4 um, is, is a really uh, broadly uh, uh, specialized uh, toll-like receptor. It can, it can signal in both locations in the cell and use both of the adapter proteins. Um, and uh, where it is is going to depend on which types of pathogens that it's detecting. Uh, in the plasma membrane form, it's detecting uh, bacteria. And within the endosomal form, usually it's detecting viral proteins. Okay, so here we can kind of see all of this in work. And again, I, this is not to memorize, uh, but some major features that I want you to notice here is that um, these plasma membrane toll-like receptors, you can see MITE88 has been recruited to them, their adapter protein. These endosomal pattern recognition receptors, TLR3 and 4, have TRIF. 7 and 9 have MITE88, as we saw in the last slide. And these... Uh, these uh, adapter proteins are allowing the toll-like receptors to recruit all of these uh, in inflammatory kinases that we see here. The, you know, the specific ones are not important. Some of them we've seen before, like the IRAX, the IL-1 receptor-associated kinases, um, but these are all immunological kinases or other signaling enzymes which downstream are going to activate a family of really stereotypical inflammatory transcription factors, which we see over and over again in immunology, and so I think they're worth pointing out here. So the activation of toll-like receptors ultimately causes the activation and nuclear translocation of uh, inflammatory transcription factors, which include IRF7 and IRF3, which we saw before. They induce the expression of type 1 interferons, like interferon beta and alpha. Uh, NF-kappa B, which we also saw before, which is important for inducing inflammatory cytokine expression, things like TNF and IL-1, um, as well as a, another transcription factor, AP1, which feeds into both of these pathways. And you can see all these arrows are pointing everywhere, basically. So the thing that each of these transcription factor does is, is not necessarily important. Um, but the idea is that we need to activate transcription factors to turn on the expression of interferons, of antimicrobial peptides, inflammatory cytokines, chemokines, etc. So this the same pattern that we saw with the cytokine receptors is also at work here. We have the receptor, in this case the toll-like receptor, it needs an adapter protein to recruit some kind of kinase, which phosphorylates a transcription factor, which induces immunological gene expression. Uh, and the genes that are induced then um, it perform the effector functions uh, that are associated with the innate immune response. So that's toll-like receptors in, in a nutshell. Uh, so toll-like receptors are just one type of pattern recognition receptor. The next one that we talked about was the C-type lectin receptor. So we're going to give a very, very brief summary of these. Hopefully you remember from our complement lectures that lectins are molecules that bind sugars. And so this is the same concept as what we saw in the, in the lectin pathway of the complement system. C-type lectin receptors are pattern recognition receptors which recognize lectins or sugar molecules, carbohydrate molecules, on the surfaces of pathogens. And so uh, those carbohydrate molecules, when they're detected by a C-type lectin receptor, um, they become activated, phosphorylated. This allows them to recruit a receptor-associated kinase called SICK. Um, and SICK is the, the important signaling molecule that allows the C-type lectin receptors to transduce their signals. Um, and something that's unique about C-type lectin receptors compared to some of the others is, is that they do induce inflammatory signaling, like most of the pattern recognition receptors, but the C-type lectin receptors also induce phagocytosis. So this bacterium here is then going to be phagocytosed downstream of the activation of the C-type lectin receptor. Um, so uh, these are important for inducing phagocytosis cytosis, particularly by macrophages, as an additional effector function of this type of pattern recognition receptor. Okay, so those are C-type lectin receptors. Uh, that's all we'll say.
Uh, kind of another highlight of the next family, which are the RLRs or the rig eye like receptors. Rig eye like receptors um, are cytoplasmic receptors. So, at, whereas before we were talking about membrane bound receptors, these are uh, pattern recognition receptors that are actually floating around in the cytoplasm, kind of looking for, uh, in particular, virally associated PAMPs. And so, rig eye like receptors get their name from uh, the, the first one that was discovered called rig eye. Um, but uh, there are a couple of more that we know now. One is MDA5, but both RIGI and MDA5 bind to a particular PAMP, um, and when they do, they can signal through a, a, an adapter protein called MAVS, or Mitochondrial Associated Antiviral Protein. So MAVS is analogous to TRIF and MIDI 88 with the toll-like receptors. Uh, the rig eye like receptors need to signal through MAVS in order to induce their responses. So the particular um, PAMP that the rig eye like receptors um, are activated by is called uh, double-stranded RNA, dsRNA. Um, and when they recognize double-stranded RNA, uh, they, they take on a confirmation that allows them to associate with MAVS, their adapter protein. So what is double-stranded RNA? Well, a, an oversimplified explanation for this, if you think about it, um, is that um, when we when we think about RNA typically in ourselves, mRNA, one of the things that when we learn about RNA that distinguishes it from DNA is that DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. Um, and this is almost always the case in our own cells, in mammalian or vertebrate cells. Um, however, there are many viruses whose genomes are actually made of RNA. They don't have any DNA. Um, and so when they replicate their genomes, they have a double-stranded RNA intermediate. Um, and so it's a very clear signal to our cells when, when we see double-stranded RNA that that probably belongs to a virus. So it's a very clear uh, PAMP that is associated with viral infection. So um, rig eye like receptors are really specially adapted for detecting viral double-stranded RNA within the cytoplasm. So uh, rig eye uh, is an example of this, MDA5 the same, when it binds uh, to double-stranded RNA, it can signal through MAVs. Um, there's an additional one called LGP2, which is more recently discovered. It seems to signal um, in complex with MDA5, but it does the same thing otherwise. It signals through MAVs. Um, and so downstream of MAVs, uh, we'll see at the very end, is very similar to the signaling through the toll-like receptors. It's going to activate immunological kinases, turn on inflammatory transcription factors in order to induce cytokine expression, and so on. Okay, so RLRs recognize double-stranded RNA. Uh, one more type of pattern recognition receptor that uh, we'll talk about are the nod-like receptors, or NLRs. Um, the thing that I want to stress about these, these are also very complicated. A couple of things that I think are important is that uh, the nod-like receptors recognize a really broad set of stimuli. So they recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns, things like flagellin, um, uh, uh, for example, or, or, or pathogen-associated DNA. Um, but not like receptors also recognize damps, which we've talked about, those damage-associated molecular patterns. And they can also recognize things like environmental toxins, uh, things like small crystals and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's kind of just like noxious stimuli can turn on not like receptors. So they're important for recognizing really broad classes of inflammatory stimuli. Uh, the other thing that's notable about the nod like receptors is that they can form those inflammasome complexes that we talked about in a previous lecture. Remember that inflammasomes are important proteolytic enzyme complexes which are capable of cleaving uh, immature IL-1 family cytokines. So uh, we saw before that inflammasomes are important for cleaving pro-IL-1 beta into mature IL-1 beta. They do the same thing for IL-18, which is an IL-1 family cytokine. Um, they do this through a molecule called caspase-1. Um, so um, again, uh, the, the big idea here is that you know uh, when we activate nod-like receptors, part of their pro-inflammatory activity is to create these inflammasome proteolytic complexes, which are able to cleave immature IL-1 family cytokines into their mature bioactive forms, um, and thereby inducing inflammatory signaling by activating the IL-1 receptor. Okay. Those are nod-like receptors. And so bringing these all together, um, you know, what I want to say one more time is that all of these signaling pathways 
really they, they all talk to each other. They're not segregated. Really the main, major difference between the different families of pattern recognition receptors is that they recognize slightly different types of PAMPs, different types of pathogens. Um, and you know they have small differences in their signaling, but ultimately what you can see is that no matter what they do, you know the, the CLRs, the RLRs, the NLRs, all of them, they all sort of end up activating these four transcription factors, which we mentioned before, IRF7, IRF3, NF-kappa B, and AP1. And downstream of these inflammatory transcription factors are cytokines, uh, including the inflammatory cytokines like TNF and IL-1, interferons, those important antiviral cytokines, as well as important uh, antimicrobial things like complement, uh, uh, you know, C-reactive proteins, things that, that we've talked about previously that are important opsonins. Um, so this is really just the way we turn the innate immune system on. And we've kind of gone backwards here, I know. Um, but uh, these are the pathways by which our cells uh, really first recognize that there's any threat, that there's any infection. Uh, in order to get the immune system started, they use really uh, stereotypical uh, signaling pathways, uh, which usually involve some kind of inflammatory kinase which turns on an inflammatory transcription factor, which induces cytokine expression. And then those cytokines then go on to uh, influence the, the other tissues in our body, the other immune cells in our body, uh, in, in all the ways that we've discussed so far, um, which ultimately, you know, hopefully is enough to control infection on its own terms. Sometimes it is, but as we've seen, sometimes it's not. And so if not, uh, then these cytokines are also important for the initial steps in priming an adaptive immune response. And so that's where we'll go next in the next module. Okay, so pattern recognition receptors, let's summarize them. We started by talking about TOLAC receptors or TLRs. These are transmembrane receptors which can be located either in the plasma membrane or within the endosome. Uh, they signal through specialized adapters that uh, are, are either in either location, so uh, either MITE88 or TRIF. And remember, these adapters allow them to signal to the kinases and ultimately to the transcription factors which transduce their signals. CLRs or C-type lectin receptors recognize carbohydrates on the pathogen on pathogenic surfaces, and importantly, they can induce both phagocytosis and gene expression. So they have two different effector functions. RLRs or Rig ILAC receptors are specialized to recognize viral double-stranded RNA, and they have their own adapter that they signal through called MAVs, mitochondrial associated antiviral protein. Um, and uh, NLRs, or nod-like receptors, are the last class that we talked about, and they can recognize a really broad array of different pathogenic stimuli, PAMPs, DAMPs, other environmental toxins, um, and when they do so, one of their major functions is to form inflammasome complexes uh, that proteolytically process IL-1 family cytokines and induce inflammation as a result. Okay, that's the end of module three. Uh, best of luck on the exam for the first three modules, and I'll see you next time as we start uh, our next set of modules talking about adaptive immunity. Thanks.